good y'all it's your boy ross back at it again with another video so we're gonna be checking out dear wwe fans stop doing that by the great one one of you guys has suggested it in the comment section in my last video so we're gonna check this out man appreciate all the love and support on the channel road to 60k oh and by the way we will be recording on the main channel soon enough for those who don't know we had a little COVID situation, so that's why we haven't been recording on the In The Clutch page. But we have seen the messages that the best moves of May and June is out. The, the original creator of the compilation, he dropped them. So you know we're going to check it out as soon as we get everything situated. So hopefully later on this week, keep your fingers crossed, we'll be able to record for you guys, man. So just be patient with us for the In The Clutch, uh, Clutch Squad subscribers. Just be patient. It's on the way. So let's get into this. I love wrestling fans. They're the most passionate and loyal fans in the world. But by God, sometimes it feels like we're not in the final stages of evolution. There's a lot of stuff we need to stop doing. Stop it! Speaking of fans, <laughs> the amount of complaints about smelly armpits is crazy. Come on, people, be better. These exist. Use it. Facts. Please. You it's really not that crazy. I've been a part of this community and making videos for a very long time right now, so I've came across a lot of crazy wrestling fans. <gasps> Hey, this guy has an opinion. Look, fatty, let's start with the part where you mentioned AEW. At the end of the day, <laughs> wrestling's not that deep. So wrestling fans, stop doing that. Real quick, click that like button or I will become a four hour show. Expecting the expected. I'm guilty of this myself sometimes, but wrestling fans tend to expect the expected all the time it's all about the right booking decision everything needs to go from point a to point b but what i've come to realize is that wrestling is a scripted reality show mm -hmm. in reality bad stuff happens i've realized mm -hmm. wrestling fans want everything to be boring yes i know what a right booking decision is but sometimes we need the unexpected we need unpredictability mm. we need okay i get his point i do I do get his point when he's like, sometimes you have to switch it up. When Jinder Mahal became champ, a lot of people were highly confused, including me. I was like, what? Jinder fucking Mahal as WWE champion over Shinsuke Nakamura over AJ Styles? What in the blue hell is going on? I get it. I get it. And, you know, he has the Miz up on the screen when he won his uh, WWE championship. He, uh, I think that was the second WWE championship, and he only had it for a week. I get it. People were confused. They didn't know if, you know, they didn't know really what to make of it. But I do have to disagree with him on one point when it comes to certain booking decisions where it doesn't even make sense why a certain wrestler is losing after you've built them up. You have them lose in a ridiculous fashion or you don't put the strap on him after he's been built up to look like he's going to win the championship. Prime example, Bray Wyatt. I don't know how many times they swerve the fans, if you could say that, to tell another story that ultimately didn't get Bray Wyatt over as much as he should have. So it's it's... It's a it's a tit for tat type situation. I get it. Having unpredictable storylines can be good, but also there's nothing wrong with a storyline and uh like a a segment where a wrestler starts at point A, gets to point B, and it it, it works because there's nothing wrong with those type of stories being told in wrestling as well. So it can go both ways here all the bad shitty stuff sometimes the shitty stuff is just as important as the right stuff it's supposed to look real nothing is gonna be perfect so i believe wrestling should be a mixed bag of everything and that's already kind of the case mm. company loyalty Ah, this one I hate. If you like a certain wrestling company, oh, man. you can't like the other one. But I actually... Here's the thing. I know that I have a lot of people that are AEW fans, and that is awesome. That's cool. I know there's some people that are indie fans, New Japan Pro fans, TNA fans, and WWE fans. I am not one of those type of pe people that will sit up there and be like, oh, 
you like AEW, where your wrestling opinion is trash, or you like WWE, your wrestling opinion is trash, or you like New Japan, your wrestling opinion. No, I don't care. Like what you want to like. But shitting on the other company or shitting on somebody else because they like that specific company, no. All I care about is good booking. That's it. You know what I'm saying? That's that's how I look at things. I'm not the type to talk down to you because you like AEW. You like what you want. I really watch both. I mean, I think both shows are great. Why can't I watch both? Stop, Jimmy. There's only one show you must pick. But why? Yeah. Why is that every time I talk about a WWE moment, I can say, wow, Roman Reigns was great on the microphone last week. Well, Kenny Omega was actually... I don't care. I don't give a shit. I don't care. The same goes with the WWE fans. AEW can do something and you will get... The Tribal Chief is better. Nobody gives a shit. Nobody gives a shit. How are you connecting these dots? I also hate when people believe that we gotta pick a team. I'm either Team WWE or Team AEW. I don't know why I did that. They don't <laughs> give a shit about you. <laughs> it's just a business tragedy. You're not a part of the WWE universe and AEW are not doing it for the fans. The bigger they will get, the more you will realize it. You're not a part of a team. You're just a viewer. Nobody gives a shit about you. <laughs> that sounds a bit too dark. You really don't need to pick sides. You can watch everything. By the way, don't think consuming 50... <laughs> He's like, they don't give a shit about you. To an extent, they really they care uh, for your viewership that's what they care about your viewership Buyers can easily and your money. follow the hours of wrestling a week is healthy there's a lot of nitpicking we're in all the guilty of this especially mm -hmm. wrestling content yes. creators i mean at the end of the day we gotta analyze this stuff and say what was good what was bad at the end of the day you need to realize that nothing's perfect there's not a single movie that is completely perfect, not a single song. You will always have something to nitpick. Does mm -hmm. Monday Nitro have that more than we need? Of course. I don't think at this point it's nitpicking. The show can be really, really bad. But if you take SmackDown, I don't really think there's major, major problems. I and mean, sometimes I believe wrestling fans are just nitpicking. I don't even think it's possible to fix that problem. This is true. I can agree okay, with Okay, everyone on that is one. guilty of this one. Buried, 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 oh, buried, yeah. buried, buried, <laughs> buried. I think he's buried. He's probably buried. You know what? <laughs> I think he's buried. No, he's not. <laughs> he is not buried. Of course, sometimes that is legitimately true. I understand. There are some people that were legitimately buried. I'm not going to lie to you. There are certain situations. Definitely EC3 is one of them. Definitely bearing, um, um, uh, not well. I guess you could say Baron Corbin. He was definitely starting to get buried. Like, I, I believe he was having backstage heat too. So that was another thing. There's, there's, there's been a few situations where boys have gotten buried, but not everyone that loses gets buried. You know what I'm saying? Just because you lose a high profile match doesn't mean you're buried. Trust me. If you're buried, you'll know. Because you'll start, that wrestler will start taking losses that they should definitely not be taking. And that, but most of the time, people win, people lose. You don't need to jump into, into conclusions. I think you can just apply that to people in general. But when I'm making videos, I can say something and people will take it out of context, jump into conclusions. You know, I've said, you know what? I think Drew McIntyre needs to step away from the WWE title picture. As much as I love Drew McIntyre, just for now, <clears throat> people will say, Oh my God, you've turned on Drew McIntyre. I didn't. You're just jumping into conclusions. And I mean, we're all guilty of this. We can see the beginning of a title reign and already say it sucks. Sometimes I'm mm -hmm. right, sometimes I'm wrong, but jumping into conclusions is not the right way to do it. Man, entitlement. Oh, this should be a good... This should be a good one. Shut the hell up. I paid money for this photo. It's probably a minority. I'm not sure. But some wrestling fans are absolute creeps. You're not <laughs> supposed to do that. Dude, you're not supposed to do that. Please. Wait. Please stop. Come on. Yeah. I remember seeing a clip of a woman kissing Roman Reigns without his consent. Are you out of your mind? Just imagine how crazy that is. And there are also many examples of wow. fans touching wrestlers. And I'm not talking- Wait a minute, hold on. So people are out here photoshopping themselves with their favorite female wrestlers and then- Bro, this is- 
yo, bro, stop being, don't, don't be this guy right here. Don't be the guy that's photoshopping yourself with a favorite wrestler. Don't, don't do that. It's, it's creepy. Just chill, bro. Chill. Talking about touching a shoulder. Another problem with entitlement is the fans saying, we deserve this. We want this champion and we will get this champion. How dare WWE not listen to us? Vince McMahon is not listening to the WWE universe. He's not supposed to, first of all. I believe that if WWE kept listening to every single mm -hmm. idea fans have, it would be boring as hell. That's just my opinion. And second of all, they do listen. There are many, many examples of WWE actually pushing someone or giving the championship to someone that people really, really want. Yeah, Wrestling there are a few needs examples. balance. We are supposed to get champions we want. We are supposed to get champions we don't want. Oh, I know the argument on Twitter is Dude, awful. if you want to ruin your mood, go to Twitter. Just people arguing about the dumbest things ever for no reason whatsoever. Just the most toxic thing you can imagine. I've stopped doing that because I've realized- Did y'all see? Those can't be real quotes from people's Twitters. No. Oh, the dumbest things ever for no- Orton has that- Wait, bro. This can't be- These is- <laughs> What the hell, bro? What is- No reason whatsoever. Just the most- Bro, what thing the you can bro, imagine. That's... I've stopped doing that because I've realized you can't change people's opinions for what? the most part. And there's really no point in doing that. Who gives a shit? Lately, the most ridiculous thing I've seen is people arguing whether Kenny Omega or Randy Orton is better. What? Isn't that subjective? That's yeah. like arguing whether pork or chicken is better. Come on, dude, blue is way better than red and everyone who says red is better can suck on my ball sack. That is so childish. Yeah. Come on. Oh boy, I know this one's gonna be... I might get some shit from this. Simping. Nothing oh, screams man. loser more than simping for WWE wrestlers. There's one thing to appreciate a female wrestler, but this is just on a whole different oh, level. Oh yeah, that's creepy, bro. It's Alexa's boy toy, bro. The fuck out of here, bro. What are you doing? Be better. Do better. By the way, it's just a fake profile I've made. Oh, oh okay. Alexa. Okay. My God. I was about to say, <laughs> that's a fake profile he made. But I'm pretty sure there's people out there that have profiles dedicated to Alexa Bliss on some simp type shit. I love you. Leave your husband. Relax. Stop doing that. Maybe you'll end up getting laid. Most of it is just cringe, you know, simping for wrestlers, talking about their appearance. Which one is better? Is Alexa Bliss better than Sasha Banks? All that shitty stuff. Sometimes it's just straight up creepy. They get obsessed. They start stalking mm -hmm. wrestlers. That is just unbelievable. They leave hateful comments on pictures with a female wrestler with their boyfriends, husbands, or whatever. Are you out of your minds? How much of a fucking loser are you? Facts, man. If you're out there doing that, chill. Just chill, bro. Just relax. Now my new bill? Taking it too seriously. I don't think it's a problem to take wrestling seriously. I mean, at the end of the day, it's such a big part of my life. It's literally my job. Mm -hmm. So obviously I do take it seriously, but at the end of the day, you need to realize it's just a television show. It's not that deep. You can be a total <laughs> geek. I don't care. You can be a total wrestling nerd. There's not a single problem with that. But when you see a bad booking decision and you lose your mind, there is a problem. <laughs> At the end of the day, it's not that serious. Not gonna lie to you, once I saw Goldberg come out there um, to challenge uh, Bobby Lashley for the uh, WWE Championship, I just... Whatever, bro. Whatever. Now, the Alexa Bliss stuff, that, that literally just had me baffled with the old mind control. Oh my god, that I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's like, what is this? I ain't go ape shit over it, I ain't go crazy about it, but I was still just like, what? Like, what are we doing, bro? 
in 2020, 2021, what are we doing, bro? This is what we putting on television? Okay. All right. I really hate this one and I'm really trying hard to avoid doing that because I think many content creators believe they're some kind of gurus of wrestling. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, wrestling is subjective. You can't say to someone, you shouldn't like this because this is bad. How yeah. dare you like this? You're smarter than that. You can't like this. We, as wrestling fans, reject the thought of you liking this. So what if... Facts, man. If you guys remember, I made a video where someone commented on me not giving a damn. I think it was the Charlotte versus, uh, um, who was she going against? Uh, Rhea Ripley. I forgot what pay-per-view it was. I think it was at Hell in a Cell. Maybe, I'm not sure. But she felt some type of way because I didn't care for the match. I'm like, bro, it's my opinion. And she was really flapping. Oh, you didn't even watch it. No, I watched it. I just didn't care. I was watching it and, you know, watching my stream. I just did not care. I didn't care about the match beforehand. I didn't care about it during the match. Like, I just didn't care. But in wrestling, if your opinion doesn't match that person's opinion, you're wrong. You're wrong. You should be crucified. Like, what, what are you doing? Just chill. That should be the theme in this video. Just chill, y'all. What if someone likes Goldberg's matches? So what if someone likes part-timer? So what if people like Brock Lesnar as the champion? So what if people like Nia... Okay, that's a bit too far. <laughs> you like Nia Jax? <laughs> the video. But in all seriousness, I hate this. You know, who are you to tell someone that they should not like a specific moment, wrestler, match, it's their opinion. It's subjective. Mm -hmm. There's literally something for everyone. People like different stuff. Explaining shit to some wrestling fans is just like explaining something to a five-year-old. Turning on every baby face. This does happen a lot more. At some point in wrestling, it became cool to hate on the baby face, mainly the champion of the brand. Recent examples are Roman Reigns, AJ Styles, Seth Rollins, and even Drew McIntyre. To some degree, I believe people really like Drew McIntyre, but I'm also seeing people hating the guy right now. I do agree that he needs to step away from the title picture for a few months, maybe until the end of the year, but I don't see where the hate is coming from. It probably started ever since CM Punk became the champion and just people and people just want someone cool. And I understand mm -hmm. that to some degree, but it seems like it's a pattern we're following right now, hating on every single babyface WWE champion. Sure, WWE could do a better job with their babyfaces, you know, they look really stupid and sometimes pretty boring. We don't need babyface to be a perfect human being. I think Randy Orton is mm -hmm. a good example of a mixed bag. He can turn into a babyface, but he's not gonna change completely who he's are. But like yeah. I've said, the main problem I have is people turning on every single babyface because it's just the cool thing to do. Sometimes they won't even hate it, but they're gonna jump on the bandwagon and follow every single fan of who does. So these are some of the things that wrestling fans need to stop doing, including mm. myself. Don't get me wrong, I'm guilty of many of these. Same sometimes here. it's just jokes, you know, don't take everything seriously. But sometimes I am talking out of my ass. Like I can say some really dumb shit that I will completely change my opinion on later. So thank you for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed Hey, man, this was a dope video, man. Comment down below, let me know, have you guys been guilty of some of these things he mentioned in the video? I know I have. I would love for you guys to start a discussion down below so we can really talk about this and we can, you know, all try to come together as a wrestling community. So please play nice in the comment section down below. But I appreciate all the love and support. Bro, to 60K. Appreciate y'all kicking in with me. And I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace. Thank you.